Between the video games, books, movies, whatever other multimedia sort of stuff that they have, I've always been a really big fan of the Resident Evil series. Or I guess you could say the Resident Evil franchise. I know some people didn't particularly care for the Resident Evil movies because they were such a departure from what uh, the original games were. The original games were survival horror and they focused on the stars team and Resident Evil the movies focused more on the Hive and the character of Alice played by Mila Jovovich. Although a lot like the games did, they started off as survival horror and eventually turned into straight action. And here we are now with the sixth Resident Evil movie, just as the seventh Resident Evil video game came out a couple days ago. While the video game has gone back to its horror roots, the Resident Evil movie series went full bore into action. I was pretty excited because I know that they'd been talking about making this uh, big grand finale for the series. And it was delayed a while because Mila was pregnant and uh, they had to give her time to have the baby and get back into shape and whatnot. So I think it got delayed like two years or something. And it's finally here. And is it worth it? The movie is very action-based, and that's clear five minutes into the film, as you have Mila fighting off a variety of monsters within the first few minutes after the uh, opening monologue that brings everybody up to speed. There were two major problems with the movie. The first problem being the whole film felt like it was being shot handheld, and as such, every shot was moving. It was constant movement. Even on the scenes where there's just nothing going on, when two characters are talking, the camera is just hovering all over the place and going up and down, and it's just, uh, I really don't like that style of filmmaking. It's frustrating, and it's supposed to capture the sense of urgency, but when the whole movie is nothing Thing but that, then it removes any sense of urgency. Like, if you've got an intense scene and you want to shoot it handheld, then that is okay. I still would rather you do it with a steady cam, but I understand you want to get that 24 Jack Bauer look. Okay, fine. But when even the small scenes, the scenes where people are talking, when there's dialogue, when it's just people walking and the camera is just hovering all over the place, it gets old really quick. However, as I said, I would be able to deal with that and I would have been able to put that aside, if not for some of the worst editing I've ever seen. Now, watching the movie, I immediately knew within a few minutes of the film, okay, they got a different editor. Because the movies have been a little choppy before, but never this bad. So I knew right away that they got a different editor because something stuck out. It was bad. It was really bad. It was so bad, after the movie was over, I had to look to see who did the editing. And it was by a guy named Doobie White. I looked up to see what else he did, and oh look, he's the guy who edited Gamer, another movie that is horrendously edited. And what I mean by bad edits is, seriously, in a regular scene, the scenes get cut too quickly. But in the action scenes, not two seconds goes by without there being an edit. And sometimes, I'd be willing to bet even less than that, like just a second. And it continued like that the entire film. Which was a damn shame, because you could tell that they had all these great action scenes set up, and they had a lot of cool monster designs, some recycled stuff from before. They had just neat things going on that you could not see. That's compounded by the fact that certain parts of the film were done in almost complete darkness. So you've got a dark scene, a camera that won't stop moving, and an editor that won't let you focus on anything. Another nitpick, something that I just wasn't feeling this time around, Alice was dialed way back. And for a movie where this is supposed to be the final chapter, you would expect her to go balls out. You would expect her to be just supreme badass. And time and time again, she got bested and wasn't really tough until like later in the film. And even then she still got her ass handed to her and she got lucky more than uh, it being any kind of skill. Like, within the first half hour of the movie, I think she was knocked unconscious three times. She got knocked out, and then woke up and she was trapped. And then got knocked out again, and woke up and was trapped. And for a character being that badass, uh, after she had her powers taken away, I think it was in 4, she had her T-virus powers taken away. And she wasn't as indestructible as she had been previously. And they pushed that a little too much. They just made her not into a wimp, but not this supreme badass that is now one of the last living humans on Earth. 
What I did like about it, I enjoyed the story. I thought uh, they had some nice callbacks to the other movies. And some little morbid jokes here and there, like uh, the Doctor showing what he did with some of the Alice clones. I liked that. It was mean, but I I liked it. And the action scenes were designed really well. I wanted to see them. I wanted to watch them. I wanted to enjoy them. But it's just the horrendous editing made each one a chore. They had some of the characters come back, Wesker's back, Claire was back, and uh, they introduced a new character. They introduced uh, Abigail, who was played by Ruby Rose, who was just in Triple X 3. And I was like, oh, cool. I just saw her in this other movie, and she came in here and essentially did nothing. Hey, here's a new character. All right. See a new character. Back to the story, I liked some of the reveals they did. I thought it was neat the way that they tied up some things and uh, made some sense out of uh, what was going on. And it was cool them going back to Raccoon City and back to the original Hive. And having that laser grid again, I just, I always thought that was one of my favorite things in the series. Two slight spoilers, I don't think anybody's going to mind these, but if you don't want to hear, turn it off. But seriously, it's not going to affect your enjoyment of the movie. First of all, Resident Evil The Final Chapter? No, it isn't. There is an end, but it's an open end, so they can absolutely continue if they want to. I guess if this makes a shit ton of money, then they'll continue the series. It definitely doesn't feel like the last one. And I wouldn't be surprised if they did something like Resident Evil Reborn or something for uh, the next one. And the other thing, and this is an even less of a spoiler, I had seen that there was a stinger after the credits. So I was like, okay, cool, I like stingers. And I waited, and I waited, and all it was was the, you're all going to die down here, that's it. So if you heard there's a stinger and you want to stick around to see it, don't bother, it's totally not worth it. Go home and save yourself the uh, 10 minutes of sitting through uh, the credits. Resident Evil, the final chapter, has a good story and horrendous editing. If you're a fan of the series and you want some closure, it's worth checking out. With the terrible editing, though, I can't recommend wasting your time to go see it in theaters. If you can wait two years, eh, you can wait another three months before it hits uh, DVD and Blu-ray. Honestly, if it was edited like the other films, I would not have had a problem with it. Like I said, the story I thought was fine. The acting was fine. I enjoyed parts of it, but it's just whenever they got into an action sequence, it took me right out of it. And this movie had a lot of action sequences in it. There's a part of me that doesn't want this to end on a bad note. I know a lot of people consider the third one to be the worst in the series, and uh, I didn't particularly mind the third one. Before, I would have been hard-pressed to decide which was the worst in the series, but I feel that uh, because of how haphazard this was, this to me felt like the worst in the series. It had a good story and cool action that they wouldn't let us see, and that's not a good way to do an action movie. If you saw Gamer, and what else did the guy do? And, uh, oh, he worked on uh, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance too, which also had horrendous editing. And he wasn't the only editor on that, but uh, still, it's edited in that really super fast style that uh, sucks. Resident Evil The Final Chapter, if this is the final entry in the series, it deserved to end better.